Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Perfect. So hi, everyone. I'm happy to be the Siftach. Siftach means to open the actual night. I'm Dan. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Dig Security. We're a cloud data security company. So we help organizations protect data on AWS and Azure and GCP and Snowflake and Databricks. We are pioneers of a category called DSPM, which is very buzzy today. And data detection response, which is how do we detect and respond to something bad that might happen with our data in the public clouds. Now, the reason that I left Microsoft, and formerly I was kind of the head of the multi-cloud security strategy at Microsoft to co-found Dig is because all my customers kept asking me the same exact questions around data. First off, what data even exists across our clouds? Across my AWS, across my Azure, across my databases and storage accounts and analytics data stores? Second, is how that data being used by my applications, users, vendors, contractors? And third, how do I protect that data at trust and motion and use? And of course, how do I protect that data from specific scenarios? Data exfiltration, ransomware, compliance breaches, these are all questions that we want to answer to our board, right? 90% of all organizations today can't answer the first question, and almost 100% can't answer the, the actual three combined, because we don't have the actual tools. Now, if you kind of think about this from a mindset of an attacker, which is how I started my actual career in 8200s, cloud data stores are always the actual target for an attack. That's where you can actually make monetary value from attacking an enterprise. But it's also the only place today in the public cloud that lacks a dedicated security solution to protect it. We have EDRs to protect our VMs. We have NDRs to protect our networks. But we don't really have a DDR solution to actually protect our data. So at DIG, we understand this complexity. We have this explosion of information. We have multiple clouds. We have microservices. And we have multiple deployment modes. A typical enterprise today has at least 20 different types of data stores that they own and thousands, if not tens of thousands of instances. That's where DIG comes in. At DIG, we built a data security platform. And our goal is to protect data in a multi-cloud environment. First off, of course, everything starts with discovering our information, finding any type of data store automatically, and classifying all the data stores automatically. So at DIG, we put an emphasis on this automatic words, because up until now, all data security products, I don't know if you ever used Everone, it's a big AD, they were all connector-based. So if you had tens of thousands of data stores, you had to manually connect tens of thousands of data stores. At DIG, we solved that problem completely. In less than 24 hours, typically, we onboard an entire environment. We onboarded a Fortune 20 to onboard their entire data cloud. And in less than 24 hours, we have a full map of all the data in the, across their public clouds. Now, once we found the data, we classify the information, we bring context to the actual data itself. How is data moving inside the organization? Where do we have PII or PHI or PCI or any type of regulated data? Where do we have sensitive data just to us? Where do we have data misconfigurations or data access permission issues or over permissions? Where do we have data sovereignty? Data sovereignty is a big topic for a lot of you today. And of course, where do we have data exposure? The goal is to identify data risk. And that's what we do here. And that's a combination of these first two columns, which Gartner now calls DSPM, and the name DIG is a leading vendor. On the other side of it, the DIG, we understand that we're still going to have hundreds, if not thousands, of people, machines, vendors, contractors, that all of them are going to have access to this information. But this access today goes completely unmonitored. So how can we detect if someone downloads a production database to our personal machine? Very common scenario, right? Or how do we detect if data is being copied outside of our cloud or mass downloads? At DIG, we threat modeled hundreds of different types of data breaches, understood how they happened, and essentially built detections and responses around them. And I'll give you kind of one more story around this. We onboarded one of the larger banks in the US. And in less than 24 hours, we discovered that for the past three years, they had a cron job running. What did that cron job do? Copy all their financial reports once a day from their AWS account to a different AWS account that doesn't belong to them. Three years. Three years because no one really monitors how data is being used after we get permissions. At DIG, we don't deploy any type of agents. We don't deploy any types of proxies. We integrate in a couple minutes. And we have zero interference with the customer's cloud. So let's take a look at how this works. And I'm going to be the brave soul today doing a live demo. So this is the, the actual DIG security platform. And the first thing that we'll do is we'll plug into our customer environments, whether it is AWS and Azure and GCP and Snowflake. And the first thing that we'll do is we'll find any type of data store that lives in the customer's environment. It can be buckets and storage accounts and databases, but it can also be VMs running a database, a MySQL or Postgres, an MSQL running on Windows. We find all of those automatically. And then, of course, we visualize where does the data sit around the globe? Where do we have this information? A lot of our customers have data residency issues. We help classify any piece of information that lives in our customer's environment. So what kind of data store is it? Is it encrypted, private, or public? Who, of course, created it or last modified it? We look at every type of data interaction for our detection and response. Is this an active data store? Because we look, is it read or written? Um, does it have retention rules? And of course, 
what kind of information have we found? We're able to find credit card numbers or SWIFT codes or IBANs or uh, passport numbers or vaccination records. Dig comes today with around 150 different classifiers. We constantly add additional ones. And of course, customers can build their own and essentially add additional ones. We do this for both structured and unstructured data. So even databases, we're able to see any type of column that has the sensitive information, what percentages of the rows we have this in. And we look at every type of interaction and any type of an event. So any activity that happens, any misconfigurations, who's using the actual data, any type of active identities, and of course, any risk associated with this information. So do we have any sensitive data that is exposed to the world? Do we have any data flowing outside of Europe violating my GDPR policies? Why do we have data flowing outside to the US? Do we have any data flowing outside of my production environment? Right? Why is this data flowing to dev or to staging or to test? Do we have any access that other vendors might have to our environment? We know all the other vendors out there in the market, but why does Cloudinary have access to our PCI data, right? And of course, we build and analyze malware and shadow backups and orphan snapshots. We build a map of all your sensitive data around the globe. Where do you have the sensitive data? And of course, whenever we want to drill down to a specific type of data, for example, credit cards, we're able to understand, first off, where do we have these credit cards around the globe? Which clouds do we have them in? But we can also have hotspots of data. Here we see that basically all of our credit cards is in one single bucket. And if we basically deep dive into that, it's just a simple Excel file that someone once dumped in a bucket and forgot about. And if we basically eliminate that, we eliminated all credit cards from our environment. So at DIG today, we support about 60 different types of data stores from structured, unstructured, semi-structured data stores. We do this all automatically, but the, the actual unique capability of DIG is that we also built um, these detection and response capabilities. We call, it the, we call this DDR. We actually named it the, the actual term, and now Gartner also uses our term. And the cool thing about it is that we're able to essentially detect mass downloads and mass uploads and data being copied outside of our clouds, and we combine that into a single platform to help you answer those three questions. What data do we own? How is that data being used? And how do I protect this information? And I'm guessing that sound was the seven minute mark. So any questions so far? <laughs> questions. Raise your hand for questions, you'll get the mic. Go Tom. Hey, how's it going? Can you hear me? Hello, Tom Schmidt uh, from AB InBev. So a quick question for you. Um, we use uh, DLP technology, and uh, I think everyone can agree that it's relatively hard to implement, full of false positives, mm -hmm. and uh, doesn't give you all the visibility you really need. Um, can you replace DLP in cloud? So first off, that's a great question. First off, there is no DLP for public cloud, unfortunately, right? Uh, today, customer data sits in five main locations. Endpoints, email, on-prem, SaaS, and public cloud. And unfortunately, we have different solutions for each. We focus today on public cloud, which is 60% of the world's data. And our DDR capabilities essentially detect and respond to something bad that might happen with your information, whether it is mass download or data being copied outside of the cloud. DLP is endpoint-based technology. And in the cloud, we don't have a single entry and exit point. If you share a data store, for example, that doesn't exist. So it did, we kind of consider ourselves the DLP for public clouds, but we're not replacing any endpoint DLP technology. We work in conjunction. David. Yeah. So you've got all the you know, S3, the, all the storage blocks, Snowflake, um, et cetera. Why not a lot of data is in SaaS apps, you know, instead of databases and things? Have you thought about that at all? <laughs> Well, uh, I see my board member over there laughing. Um, this is coming up. This is coming up. Wait for an announcement coming up soon. Tomorrow? OK. <laughs> Hi, Dan. Thank Hi, you Christian. very much. Fantastic presentation. Thank you. Uh, can you give me your thoughts on secret discovery and kind of you addressing the problem of secret sprawl, if that's something that you want to do? That's a fantastic question. So first off, um, definitely. Do we discover any type of secret, whether it is sitting in a database, whether it is sitting in a bucket, in a file, in a parquet file, in a snappy, in a zip? We're able to find, I think, about 35 or 40 different types of secrets, whether it is GitHub tokens or AWS keys or GitLab or 
Um, private keys, we even found in one of our environments, their chase, their active HA, their active chase API key, and they had to kind of stop our POC and kind of replace all the keys across all their environment quickly. Uh, but we're able to essentially discover any type of key in uh, customer environments, certificates as well, anything like that. It's automatic. It's out of the box. But great question. And we plug into a vault or a keyless over there. I think he's over there. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> any other question? I don't know if I have one more question. <laughs> Just one more quick question. Snapshots. I, don't, I didn't hear you mention snapshots, but it's, been, it's becoming a much bigger risk for us. On the mm -hmm. Can you, do you cover that as well? We discover, classify, and show you snapshots that are risky today. So orphan snapshots and snapshots that are being copied or, or shared or downloaded to like specific machines, definitely. Okay. Thank you. Guys, thank you so much for the time. We have really, really cool goodie bags over there, and my team is over there. So happy to be the first, and you're going to have an amazing night. Thank you so much. All right.